Hello, good morning and welcome back to On The Hook. My name is John Locker, I'm fishing from my 17 foot boat on the south coast of Cornwall and we are in the middle of winter. <laughs> Unfortunately, this time of year, you, you can't pick your days, you just have to go whenever you can. The sun, believe it or not, came up about two hours ago. I haven't seen it yet. I don't expect I'm gonna see it all day. We have a very damp, misty, misly grey morning. But at this time of year, in the middle of winter, you just have to take every single opportunity that you can. So yeah, we've got light northerly winds all day, so it should be pretty flat. We might have a bit of swell when we get out there because it's been rough for a few days. The tides are next to nothing. They are very small. So what I'm gonna do, because we've had a bit of rough weather over the last couple of days, I'm not gonna go offshore because there'll be a lot of swell. I'm hoping that I can anchor up on some reef inshore and get out of the swell and enjoy some mixed fishing. It's just gonna be an anything type of day, fishing mixed on, on <laughs> mixed fishing on a reef at anchor. I'm imagining that the species we're going to see are probably going to be like poor cod, pouting, uh, cuckoo wrasse, ballon wrasse, hopefully a winter bream, dogfish, bull hush, congers, maybe even a ling, anything. It's going to be a mixed type of day. Yeah, that is a good sign. That there is bait fish. I was just about to say the first order of the day is to try and find some bait. It looks like I have found it. So yeah, let's get after it. I'll explain all the rigs and the tackle and everything as I'm doing it. Just wish me luck. Yeah, that's a good sign. They're better at finding fish than I am. No matter how many times you see them dolphins, it always brightens your day, doesn't it? There they are. It's strange, people usually associate mackerel with summer fishing. Here in Cornwall, we get some of our best mackerel fishing actually in winter. There's a lot of pilchards mixed in with these today. I can feel them rattling on you. All I'm doing there is I'm searching up through the water column. I don't know where in the water they're going to be, all the way from the bottom to the top. So you just work your feathers all the way through it. Bouncing the wind, bouncing the wind, all the way up from down the bottom. couple more of them and we'll be laughing. Right, now that we have enough bait we're going to get over to the reef and it's just started to rain again. Could be worse, could be snowing. Let's go. Because I'm going to be anchoring onto rough ground, I'm going to be using a grapple anchor and I have it rigged with a weak link there so if you get stuck, I can trip it out. I carry a couple of different types of anchors for the different types of ground that I'm going to be anchoring on. Plough anchors are better for mud and sand, and grapple anchors are better for rocks. What I'm going to do is I'll drop the anchor off one side, get the boat laid back, and then we'll try and do some fishing. You can see how miserable it is over that way there, can't you? I'll just show you. We might even see a bit of blue sky in a minute. I think the wind's going to push all the rain right offshore. Another reason I'm glad that I stayed in shore today. Let's get our anchor set. We're anchoring up in 25 metres of water. So I'm expecting to put out 60 to 70 metres of rope. On my anchor rope, I have a boy and an old even. Use that for hauling the anchor. There we go. That's 60 metres of rope. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to fix a button. <laughs> Wind caught out of the boat, so now the boat swung around then. All I do here is I fix a button to the rope so that the boy doesn't slide all the way to the boat. 
Otherwise, your anchor buoy would end up right underneath the bow of the boat. You don't want that for two reasons. The first reason, because if it's right underneath the boat, any time you go over a swell, you snatch at the anchor. Any time the boat goes over a swell, you snatch at the anchor and it can pull the anchor out. Now, all I've done is I've fastened it to the after cleat now, so effectively we're anchored backwards. This is bedding the anchor in. I don't want to get all the way sat back and realise it's going to drag and going to drag. So this is bedding the anchor in. Also, it saves me doing all that work up the front of the boat. You can't do this in really, really strong tides. It's quite dangerous to anchor the boat backwards in a really strong tide. I'm in a tiny tide today. All I'll do now, now that I know that I'm going to be sat somewhere like, is I'll pass the rope over the top, tie it to the forward cleat and then let it go down here. Yeah. Reason why you also, why you don't want the, want the anchor buoy underneath the bow of the boat is because people can't see it. Someone's steaming along and they can see an anchor buoy and then they can see the boat in front of it, they'll know you're anchored. Whereas if the buoy's right underneath the bow of the boat, they might not see it, they might think you're drifting, they might think you're anything. Also, that comes into play when you're hauling it using the Alderney rig. You'll see that hopefully at the end of the session. Yeah, I say at the end of the session, I don't plan on hauling the anchor too many times during the session. Fingers crossed. Now that I've tied the rope to the front of the boat, you can see that the anchor boat is still down here. All I do... Let it off the cleat there, and the tidal swing is right round. We'll end up facing... Well, facing into where we want to be fishing. Just like that. I'll get all baited up and I'll show you the rigs. Yeah, the rigs. The rigs I'm going to be using today are going to be little tiny scratching rigs on the lighter rods and I'm going to have some bigger baits out on the big rod. So all I've done is I've knocked up a few sets of them when I was at home. Say so these are little hooks. These are actually I'll tell you exactly what these are. Size four Cox and Roll stingers. Oh, is it still there? Is it, is it still there? That'll be a cuckoo rasp that. And it's just a two hook flapper rig. Just a general scratching rig. This is a catching anything rig. It works well for your little reef species. Right, now that I've finished messing around, there we are, we're ready to go. Like I say, just a little two hook scratching rig. A two ounce lead on the end. And I've put some little tiny strips of frozen squid on the end. Like I say, it's going to be, I'm going to get a bycatch of pouting and wrasse. But I'm crossing my fingers for a winter bream. Black bream or red bream. It's always a way in here. Literally, just put it down. It's always a way. I'd literally just put the rod down, hadn't I? Well, there's the first two. That's a male cuckoo wrasse. And a little poor cod. So exactly as I predicted, a bycatch of cuckoo wrasse and poor cod. Go on, spit it out. Because I'm only fishing in shallow water, these fish, most often than not, will go back. A little poor cod there. That's a good sign. If there's, if there's little poor cod down there, if there's little bait fish down there, there will be bigger fish down there. If there's no little fish, there'll be no big fish, because there's nothing for the big fish to eat. Now 
and another lovely looking male cuckoo-ross. Unfortunately we are going to have, like I said earlier, there's going to be a bit of a residual swell. So we're going to be slopping around a little bit today, but he is a beauty. This is a male. The males and females have got completely different colorations. If I catch a female, I'll show you. But yeah, they, these are lovely. And there's the bait. Second rig is exactly the same as the first. I've just taken taken a frozen calamari and just cut it up into little tiny strips. These are like a centimetre wide by three centimetres long. Just thread them on the hooks. That was a really slow bite. You get, to, you get to tell the type of bites and the type of fights from different fish. This is a really sluggish one. And that is why. <laughs> now this is a beautiful fish. This is a three bearded rockling. They live right down and amongst the snaggiest, roughest little bits of rock you'll find. Then it has its name because it's uh, got three little beards there. One on the bottom, two on the top. Yeah. These are affectionately named a slug by some folks. I'll tell you what, I'm going to stick them down there. Stick them down in that live bait tank to calm down. Yeah, you get to <laughs> you get to kind of tell what type of bites things are going to be like, like a real a real erratic bite like that, the bream or a ras. That one there, it was just a slow pluck and then like a nod, and then when I struck into it and lifted it, the rod just arched over. Now a ras or a bream will dig, like a cod will nod. If it's like an erratic digging like that, you'll tell it. Like a pollock will dive, a dogfish will writhe. Yeah, you get to kind of tell. I don't know if you noticed there, on that, that fish there when I was bringing it up, the rod just arched over and it was just a dead weight the whole time. Lovely looking fish to see. <laughs> not worth eating, not worth keeping. Just, just nice to see. This is hopefully going to be just like a relaxed day fishing in shore. I mean we've got a little bit of slop, we're rolling side to side but we can't do anything about it. If we can get the big rod out and we can find some conger and some ling, we might be able to find a decent fish but most of it is going to be fished today on these little rods this is a pair of conflict inshore rods this is a 30 gram and that's a 50 gram i got the 50 gram originally and i liked it that much that i got a lighter one this is this is a wonderful little whippy rod fishing for smaller fish great for the lures and scratching about like this that heavier rod there oh there we go there's a fish straight away See what I mean about the more erratic fight? As in it's digging more. This one's coupled with a clash and the other one's coupled with a slammer. That rod there, the 50 gram with a slammer, I took that one to Florida with me. And I had, there, uh, oh. Just as I was saying earlier on about the male cuckoo ras having different colours to the female, this is a female. Gorgeous little peachy pinks, aren't they? Yeah. This is a Clash 4000 and I've got 30 pound braid and a 30 pound fluoro leader on. I use this for all sorts. Like I said, the one there that I took to Florida, I had like 30 pound bonita in 200 foot of water on slow jigs with it. It's, um, yeah. As long as you marry them up to the right type of reel, the right size of reel, they are fantastic to use. Even though the majority of the fish that I'm going to be pulling out today are going to be less than three pound. If I get a three pound bream today, I will be absolutely buzzing. Most of the fish today I'm going to be pulling out are going to be one pound, two pound, something like that. By using lighter balanced tackle like this, it still makes it a lot of fun.
There's no need to rush them to the boat either. If you just wind them, like just drag them straight to the boat, that's when their swim bladders blow and they don't go back. You take your time with them like this. Any of the fish that you catch, if you don't want to keep them, oh. there's your male. There's your male cuckoo ras. Yeah, by taking your time, bringing them up. I mean, like I say, we're only in, at the moment we're in 26.2 metres. By taking your time, bringing them to the surface, you've got more chance of them going back. I regret doing this. Tell you what, he's got sharp teeth. There he is. Got some lovely, like, well, leopard spots on it, hasn't he? Don't know well you can see if it's sun. Look. <laughs> yeah, I tell you what, them teeth are sharp. Was not expecting that. Did me there. Oh, Schoolboy. <laughs> Schoolboy error on that one. <laughs> Here is another species. Oh, I'm racking them up today. Move you this way a little bit so you can see out the sun. But that, that's a Tompot Blenny. Another species from right in amongst the rocks. I can't exactly say he put a massive bend in the rod, but I saw the bite. He got an aggressive little bite on him. Just the same as before, like my little scratching rig catches, <laughs> catches everything. Yeah, bites have completely dried up. Pull the anchor up, I'm gonna go and find a different part of the reef. Anchored up in a new spot. Tide's slowing right down now. Thought I would just drop this bit off at side to see what was down there. And uh, <laughs> poor oh no. I was thinking poor cod, but it, no, it's a little tiny cuckoo ras. That was it. That bait had been on the bottom about five seconds. Lovely little female. This time, there was a little ballon ras. There you go. Until the, until the boat swings around, we're going to have the sun behind us, I'm afraid. See, see the bite? The proper little pecking bite, innit? Got it. That one wanted to be down there. That felt like heavier fish. This might be like a fat pout in this one. See how the rod's just bent over, there's no fight in it. Whereas like the wrasse, the wrasse are constantly digging, aren't they? Sat out in the tide now. What we got? Oh, what did I say, a pout in? So the pouting and it is a jumbo pouting. That is a big one that one. <laughs> He's a proper bruiser. Ooh, I can just to say see the hook. There you are, that was it. These have been nailing it today, these little size four stingers. Don't you dare. There you go. Big fat pout. This is a member of the cod family. You can tell because it's got that little bib underneath there. There, look. Oh. 
Oh, straight back, he wasn't messing around. Yeah. There's another species. This is a prime spot to put a big bait down on the seabed. As soon as I drop this back down, I'm going to put a big bait down. A big mackerel flapper. Well, I'm going to be fishing that on. This is one of my fish locker conga rigs. And that is an Ato Cox and Raw meat hook. I'll show you just before I drop it down to the bottom. Yeah. I'm not going to complain about the sun being behind me. Just because it's nice to see it. <laughs> this is the mackerel flapper bait I'm going to be using. The full mackerel, all I've done is I've just opened it up, taken the spine out. I'm going to be fishing that on a heavier rod. This is, this is an ugly stick 3050. If there's any conga or any ling down there, this is what's going to catch them. I put this down just at the side of the boat, watching for the bite, at the same time that I'm fishing the lighter rods and things like bream. Just covering your bases. That rod's for big fish. Yeah, my bait's on the other rod. All I've got is I've just got a little pack of frozen squid. Well, you can see how cold it is today. This is still frozen. Just keep taking one out every now and again. And slicing it up into tiny, tiny pieces. It might look like it's warm, but it's not. Turned into a stunning day, considering what it was like this morning. Much better than forecast. Really glad I made the effort. Got ya. Yeah, unfortunately, with the boat swinging round, it is going to be more difficult to see the decent bites on the big rod. And because we're fishing in really snaggy ground, you need to see them quick. Because they might, if it's a conger it's just going to go in a hole and it's going to, going to bind you up. There's not much I can do, unfortunately, about the sun. It is, it is where it is today. Another pouting. Yeah, this is the 50 gram conflict and the slammer four, four and a half thousand. It's a little bit overgunned for what I'm catching today, but you never know when something decent might show up. Not a bad sized fish, are they? Good fun on the spinning gear as well. Ling, generally, they'll give a proper bite. You'll know you've got a ling bite. But congas can be everything from like a really, really light mouthing bite to like the rod's going to leave the ro the rod's going to leave the boat. And I've seen them catch loads of people out before. I've seen them catch folks out when they they think it's going to be a little tiny fish because they're just getting a pecking bite and they're like. Ugh try and pull straight into it and rod just nearly disappears so you should always treat it like it is going to be a good fish oh it's come off oh no it's still there And there's your conger eel for the species tally. 
He was a weird one, that one. Good bite. Struck into it and he must have just come up in the water. Because it was as if he wasn't even there. I thought for a second that he'd come off. There you go. I'm glad that's produced some because the boat's just swinging around all over the place now. I'm gonna to have to go down to just fishing probably one rod on the side because I just can't keep the boat in the right place. The pretty one in him. I'll give it 10 more minutes on this mark and then we'll move somewhere else. Yet another beautiful milk cooker grass. So it'd be all right if I was targeting, well, saying that if I was targeting these today, I probably wouldn't have caught any. Yeah, I've been doing all right with these today. No bream, no sadly. Let's get this iron hooked and put back. And there we are, a double shot of male cuckoo wrasse. They are a beautiful fish, but I think I've caught enough of these for one day. I don't know if you can see, but the wind's picked right up. I've timed that perfectly. That was a nice little day scratching about on a reef, just making a day out and out. All I was using was these little two hook scratching rigs. Size four hooks, little bits of squid, little bits of mackerel. Nothing more than like two or three ounce, and I've stuck the hook in my finger. <laughs> yeah, perfect little light inshore fishing for them conflict inshore rods. I don't know how many species I had up together, but I had fish non-stop. I hope you enjoyed joining me. All the very best. See you later.